welcome to the CTO Perspective, where we discuss unique perspectives about the most current issues in IT operations. Today, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic called the IT Ops Maturity Model, and we'll be doing that with Jason Walker, Chief Customer Officer at Big Panda. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jorn. Good to see you again. It's great seeing you. Always very eye-opening talking to you. So, uh, so IT Ops Maturity Model, let's dive into that. Uh, IT environments are increasingly hybrid, complex, and very dynamic, constantly changing. And IT Ops teams are scaling, are constantly scaling their teams, their people, their processes, and their tools to address this. And in the process, they're creating a lot of moving parts that need to work together very well. And the way that they measure how well they're working together is by using operational KPIs such as MTTX and so forth. Uh, but it seems that they're missing something. And that is the fact that as they're developing and as they're scaling the parts of their IT operations, each part is maturing at a different rate, a different speed. And that's creating an issue, isn't it? It is um, because to do IT ops well, you have to be good at multiple things. And really I would divide them into three major areas. Uh, first is monitoring. Second is incident management and, and the processes you use around that. And the third is something I'll call awareness. And I think everybody knows what monitoring is, um, the amount of coverage and, and quality you have, uh, as well as your event processing capability. Incident management's been well covered in other places and organizations know how to mature there. But the third one, awareness, um, how much do you know about your services, your topological, your change awareness, um, and your diagnostic awareness is, is what I'll call it. And if you, if you uh, advance along any one of those more quickly and, and get ahead of yourself, so to speak, it will cause problems in your IT ops functioning. And, and why is that? Why is it causing problems when you're not on the same level of maturity in each of these three pillars? Um, if you think about it like a, like a weightlifter who uh, has to do a... a full clean and press. Um, if you only develop your legs and you try to lift something heavy and your upper body can't take it, you're going to fold in half. And if you, for instance, in the IT ops world, um, you have uh, a ton of really good monitoring sources and you're ingesting millions and millions of events telling you all sorts of things, but you lack the capability to deal with that or to automate the flow or to enrich that data, then you're going to create tons and tons of, of uh, in, non-actionable incidents that then create a workload. And, and you'll, so you'll start stumbling over yourself if you don't keep pace with, with all the different areas that you need to, to be good at to be good at IT ops. So, so you're as fast as your slowest part in the, in the pipeline. So the, the slowest part, the most immature part is weighing you down. Absolutely. If you have uh, a very manual incident management process where nothing is automated, data has to be passed manually from let's say an alert payload into a ticketing system, you are going to get bogged down with, with that very administrative function. Uh, and then all of your assignment, all of your escalation, maybe some of your, your automated context gathering. If you, if you can't keep pace with that upstream uh, ingest of monitoring events, then yeah, you, you are going to fall over. So you actually developed a maturity model for these three pillars with several stages for each one, right? Yes, uh, we use this, a standard maturity model um, and really we, we broke it up for IT ops in each of those, those major areas. Uh, you're either reactive, responsive, proactive, uh, which is where things start to get better. And then uh, semi-predictive, semi-autonomous, which is really the peak maturity we see out there for most organizations today. And then the nirvana state of autonomous operations. Um, and uh, most organizations are aspiring to that, or maybe they've hit it with one or two services. Right. So five stages uh, from zero to, to, to the nirvana, as you said. How do you know, how do you assess which state you're in in each of the three pillars? So for each of the, the, the three pillars, we um, have, of, of course, a, a, a graphic that describes where, each, where you are in each of the, the phases of maturity. And then we point to a few specific metrics for uh, event processing, for instance. Um, the key metric is incident volume. It's not MTTX. It's how many incidents are you running 
relative to your scale as an organization. Okay, and for the other two, for example, just so we get a feel for sure, it? Sure, for, for incident management processes, um, incident actionability is one metric that you look at. MTTX, of course, everybody looks at that. And then the other one, uh, especially when you get to the higher phases with incident management, average incident priority. Because as you get more predictive, that should be reducing. You should have more lower priority, uh, a higher ratio of low priority issues. And then on awareness, the, the key metric is uh, the data volume that you're ingesting as part of your operations pipeline. Okay. So once you've established which stage you're in in each of the, uh, the three areas, what, 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 be, what would be the next step? What do you need to do? Really, you want to look for your outliers. Where are you ahead the most? And stay where you are there. And, so, and then that draws your attention to where are you behind the most? And if your incident management process is completely manual or undocumented or inconsistent, okay, let's work across people process technology to bring that up one or two notches. And gradually you get more automated, gradually you get um, much more proactive and, and so on as you go through. If you have no topological awareness or very little, okay, let's go out and collect that information from all the different uh, owners of that, of that information and tools that they, that they are running uh, to collect it. So what you're saying is it's, it's a bit different, I guess, than, than the, the uh, I would say, instinctive way of looking at IT operations. You've got an issue, you have a, a lot of downtime, or you're having issues with service availability and the quality of service. You're saying, take a, take a step back for a second and see, and, and, and see how mature you are in each of the three areas. You need to grow up first in order to be able to deal with what you're doing. Don't look at the end result. Take a look at how things are working between themselves within your organization and put your prioritization in the place where you're least mature. Leave the operational KPI aside for a second. Deal with the gaps first. Yes, because those gaps will hold you back significantly. If you have a choke point in your operations pipeline where everything slows down, then you got to deal with that choke point and open it up uh, and make it function well before you can move any more through that pipeline. Okay, and how do customers, when they hear about this maturity model, is this something they connect to? Is it difficult to, to, to get them to adopt it? No, I, the, the times we've, we've brought it in front of customers or, or different organizations, they've immediately looked at it and said, oh, that makes sense. Yes, I actually am a little embarrassed to say I'm way back here with my automation around incident management processes. That's all manual right now, and we're just fighting that with bodies. Uh, and and in any other area, I, I ask them, hey, how's your monitoring coverage? Well, about 30% of our incidents are detected by monitoring. Okay, that's a little low. The other 70% is what you've optimized around. Let's look at improving that 30% before we do anything else. And that's, you know, it's a very pragmatic, sensible approach to making your organization function better as a whole, rather than really, you know, buying off on any sp specific area as the solution to everything. Got it. And, and how does Big Panda fit into this uh, maturity model? What is it, what can it offer to customers? I think, um, you know, people succeed and fail with tools uh, to different degrees based on how they use them. Big Panda can be a huge, um, uh, visibility improver for, for that operations pipeline. Big Panda uh, puts analytics around the entire pipeline so that you can look at it as a whole. And it provides a place to do all the things where you might have gaps. And so across enrichment, correlation, uh, automation, you know, kind of the big three, Big Panda gives you a place to do that if you don't already have one. And tying those together and then measuring the results, very powerful for uh, any organization. So, so it's also also one it creates visibility it helps you understand where you are in each of the stages of maturity and also helps you solve part of the gaps in parts of that parts of those uh, places yes because you'll pull those metrics out immediately and know where you are in, in an area you'll you'll quickly pick up on weak points in your overall pipeline um, and I mean just overarching you will start looking at it as a pipeline rather than as an assortment a collection of different tools um, that you've just kind of glued together. Uh, now it is one continuous thing that, that delivers either efficient or inefficient IT ops and uh, good, good or bad service availability. And you can start to address those right away. 
And, it, and in certain places, it can help you actually improve the gap, right? In terms of enrichment and where in parts of the incident management. Oh, absolutely. It, it's, uh, it's hugely powerful once you start using it for that. So, um, but it, it's dependent on good inputs, just like everything else. So, I guess. Yeah, cool. All right. Thanks so much. This has been very enlightening. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was really good talking to you again. Great talking to you. I'm sure we do that again soon. And if you want to hear more CTO perspectives or learn about IT operations and AI ops, please visit us at bigpanda.io. See you next time.